So in here we got the breeding pair of Severum spawning in the pond over here off on this thingy. Inside is a few uh, fish. There's some goldfish that I added. Um, there's a spawning pair of convicts over here. And there should be another spawning pair of... Well, that's the shark off to the corner there. It's hard to see, but... That's the shark's tail. It's uh, over a foot long. And uh, it doesn't look like you can see... Oh, the fire mouths. Should be able to see the fire mouths in here. Yep. Yeah. That's the 75 gallon pond, and it has a weird setup, but honestly, it works way better than a lot of my tanks. It has this weird power head going over a filter to get add the carbon. Then we have a 300 gallon sponge filter, and this is a 75 gallon tank. And that helps a lot, honestly. And there should be a... Where's my Pleco? Oh, it's probably in the cave. And that's why the other one can't go in there. And then up here... We got my Coppentus. The Blue Texas Cichlids. The Coppentus Cichlids. And I just cleaned all their tanks. Did a big water change for them. And made new filters for them. And, uh, yeah, I gravel backed a lot and picked that tree up and had to make spots for the plecos because it didn't seem like the plecos were getting enough areas. But there was eggs and fry scattered throughout this whole tank of just, hey, look, there's one of the clown plecos. That's one of the new ones I just got. They got some crazy patterns on some of the new ones. The older ones have like a, a distinct pattern. Man, that tetra is getting really big for a tetra. But no, there's no more convicts in here, so if the flower horn dovies wanna do their thing, looks like they're already picking areas. And she's been using this tree to kind of like tell him, hey man, why don't we pick the tree area? He's like, well, Papa's watching, dog. Don't do it now. But yeah. It's crazy how these mean breeding cichlids, if there was other cichlids in here, they'd be dead. But instead, the, these guys, the tetras, they're just fine. Like, they hurt each other. See that one chasing the other one? They scattered eggs and laid them all throughout that tank too. But I'm going to go ahead and creep into this room and see what's going on without notifying them. We got the Akaras in here. A few more goldfish. Um, it looks like they're all kind of picking up their different food from different spots because I did do this room too, or this tank in here too. My angelfish psycho, he's back here with the green terrors and the Oscar and the blue acaras. Some of those uh, feeder goldfish came in cool colors. I did keep some of them back here with the nice fish. Even though I don't need any more carp. <laughs> Been there, done that. But no, uh, after doing a cleaning, I did notice some of my new plecos. See the, that's one of the newer clowns. And I don't know if I po posted it, but I found, uh, the other day I found all my old, my older clowns in here. And so now there's like three different, different generations of L066. Uh, clown plecos in here. I don't know what kind of dance that Oscar's doing. Maybe he's claiming that area, but he don't have a, a mate, so I don't know why he was doing that tail wiggle. There was eggs all over that stone back there. I don't know whose they were, but when I it was probably blues. Blue, are you mating with green terrors? A royal blue Akara with a green terror. Who wants to see that? I mean, they are kind of the same fish, so it probably would be beautiful to tell you the truth. And look at these guys just chilling in a group. Get us out of here, get us out of here. It's crazy, the ones that have black on them, they lose that color as they go into adulthood. Most of them go gold. Even some of those other gray ones will turn brown and then gold as they eat more vitamin C. 
I'm trying to find out what the Oscar's been up to. Looks like he's got a big poop to let go there. But all the green tears are like staring at me here. What do you guys want? Ask you. Ask you. What are you doing, Ask you? He says I had to reclaim my cave because you put this big thingy in here. I just wanted to put some more stuff in the bottom to distract all the fish in here because it is overstocked. We even got one of those firemouth Miki cousin fish living in the castle, pretty much owning it. And there's, I don't know if you can see that, but there's fry all the, and eggs all over the bottom of there. You know, come to think of it, I haven't seen the other, the female to that, that pair, the firemouth pair. Or cheeky cichlid pair. But no, they're getting used to that tank and, oh, yeah, the plants in here. I did some plant moving. They're all doing really good. Going up the wall there. All around the tank. They're working their way. And then I got some more over there. I got to cover back up the cymbals and stuff. Just trying to keep the drum set nice and... Uh... They don't mind the drums either. Honestly, I thought it would bother them. But apparently not that much. The cat, on the other hand, he hates drums. Yeah. And now we're out here. We're going to come out here and check out what I did out here. I ended up getting all the foods I need and all the meds I need for the month. My Azul peacock bass. What's up, Azul? He's so mad because, like, a bunch of fish take, took over his area. And some guy came by a while ago, bought all my catfish out. So I had to also buy some shiners. Some more goldfish. Um, looks like they're not eating a lot of them. Tiger and the bass here had bloodworms earlier, so I don't think they're digging it. But I put two plecos that I bought at VI Pets today. There were some unique looking plecos. I think they're still the common pleco, but different, like, uh, lighter straight to the black. I don't know if maybe it's just because they're stressed and the water change, but... A little different colors than I normally see in some of the plecos. <sighs> and then the plants are also doing killer over here. That one is doing my mother-in-law's tongue that I got when my dad passed away is doing awesome. I took the wrap around it off and it fell on the pond. Hey baby girl. And ever since I removed out all the other tank mates, but Small fish, I kept goldfish, shiners, uh, mollies, platies, a bunch of baby guppies are all in here with big mama catfish. Yes, she eats them, but uh, she eats everything, honestly. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. Mama, mama, you're bigger than the fish in the lake. I don't even think there's a catfish in Swan Lake that big. Even a channel cat, even if it pushed that big. I, I don't think a channel cat could get that big of a head, no matter how hard it tried. Anyways, the banana cat, long whisker baby here, has been loving having the tank to herself. Her tail's healing up, you can see that. Um, she gets tons of goldfish and stuff, and hopefully the goldfish... I'm going to try next time I go in to get some... Uh, bigger koi and goldfish to go with her because they're not nipping at her tail or anything which is what I really wanted and then we'll dissipate the attention away from you mama yeah you yeah you look how long them whiskers are look how long your whiskers are you know most people don't get to see Amazon critters up so close in their lifetime honestly but I get to see them every day. And then over here, we got Sparkles beefing up. Right, Sparkles? You beefing? Look at the size of that bass right there. Looks like he's got a heart on his tail. I love that. I just seen the pictures from him from uh, two years ago. And he was nothing but a little, little guy. So to see him like this is so cool. He's actually a big fish. 
for this tank, honestly. This is a 90 gallon wide. It, people think, well, every, uh, they see those 40 gallon breeders or 55 gallon tanks and they always go, it's a 100 gallon tank. No, this is like not even 100 gallons and it's huge. And it's got a huge footprint, but like, it's actually the widest tank I got as far as width. And this bass retouches tail to nose or to beak. What's up, Mama Pike? We got Mama Pike in here, by the way. We do have, I don't know if I can find it right now, but we do have some clown plecos in here because you can't have the big ones in here, uh, the medium sized ones, because obviously the bass will eat them. What are you doing, making a bed there with the parrotfish? Seems like something you cichlids would do. What are you doing? You hiding from the camera? You camera shy? Let's see if I can see what Polly the parrot's doing. It's crazy though. What's up, Gyarados? Bass ain't giving you no guff, is he? I think the bass is just happy to be alive and not be chased every day by the catfish, to tell you the truth. There is a couple goldfish left in here too. Yeah, I put the most of the goldfish. I think I bought fifty or a hundred, and uh, there was shoot probably like I think twenty five in here, and the rest were in the other pond. Buddy, come here, Sparkles, Sparkles. It is cool to see him change colors and start to get healthy again out here. He had a hole in the head in the pond, so starting to look a little bit better. You can already tell by the black spots, that's where parasites have been. A lot of those freckles form from that. But uh, it's just like any kind of parasite, any. But I treated every tank each month. It didn't matter in the pond. It was almost impossible with all the fish in there. Now with just the catfish, she's in her glory and... Her and the other fish get treated differently. The VIP treatment. Right, Bass? Looks like he's really liking the poly there, the parrotfish. He's super full right, though, right now, though, so he's probably not going to move around for us. Come here, buddy. He is in love with that parrotfish. He is cornered with it, and they don't like mama here. My tiger, or my uh, Colombian pike. That's the Colombian two-spot pike. The dinosaur polybircher fish. And then the azul peacock bass, who's a different subspecies. You can see the bar difference. Three bars on that fish. Eight bars on this one. And down here's my tiger pike. Tiger! He was the more exotic of the fish that I got, and so is he. That's why they're kind of separated. So I can pretty much easily show the difference to people when they come over. And all the goldfish in here, it looks like, are trying to hide underneath the filters. And some of them are just chilling at the bottom. But their fate is sealed. Even look at here. <laughs> they're trying to hide under a log. But I want these fish to get their aggression out on the feeder fish, not on each other. What up, Azul? You know, if you keep them in a tank where they can see from the side, they stare at you all day long. Wherever you go, they go. However you act, they act. They're like an Oscar, but a bass. <laughs> if I would have known that in the beginning, I never would have kept Oscars. I would have kept peacock bass <laughs> instead of all these other cichlids. But yeah, it's a decently long video, but after doing all this work with my fish tanks and cleaning it, I figured it's justice. It gives it justice to show everybody all the hard work that I do and when it pays off, when you do work your butt off on all this filtration, the current has to be perfect, the water conditions. Like you'll notice some of them might not have bubbles, but they have the top water moving at all times like that one. It's a cooler tank to where it doesn't have to be as hot. It slows down their growth a little bit, all that kind of stuff, just a little bit. And there is a heater in there, but the top water is always moving, but I don't have to keep bubbles. Bubbler, a bubblers in a tall tank like this cause like 
because it takes so long to come up. By the time it gets there, it's like an explosion at the top. It's like the snowball effect, but the other way. The gravity just brings it up and the buoyancy just makes it boink, pop every time it comes up, which creates algae blooms all over the top of your lids. And yeah, I could deal with that and clean it. And yeah, I'm pretty sure he's eating a fish right now. And that is exactly how Tiger eats. He literally plays with his food. He sucks on it. Like, I've seen him eat bloodworms. He sucks the blood out of the bloodworms and spits them out. He's a very wild fish. He was wild caught from Brazil. And they're supposed to get up to like two feet, turn purple when they get big. And I have not seen that out of him yet. He's still got red eyes, still changing colors, still got the rock on symbol right there. Rock on, buddy. See right there? And he can change from striped to non striped. But he still hasn't turned purple on me. I've seen people. People's pikes when they get older they do it, but not yet. He actually has been in the pond before too for quite a while before that catfish reached its maturity. But I love my fishies. I gotta catch their patterns and man, what is that? You think it's like a, a heart but a little a little doody -do, do next to it? I don't know. Sparkles is funny, he's got a good pattern. Polly's got a killer pattern too. We want sparkles. We want buddy. My bass. He he started out in this tank back in the day with the Oscar, and he's about the size the Oscar was now. So crazy. And. To close out, let's say goodbye to Mama here. Bye bye, yay! Bye bye, yay! Mr. Week! Mr. Week! Mr. Week! Mr. Week! I had to pet her. And don't grab that dead fish while I'm at it. <laughs> yes, the fish die sometimes. Um, she can whip her tail really hard and kill like 30 fish. And that's just something you have to deal with owning one of these big beasts. Is you gotta be on top of it. It's n My work's never done, man. It's never done. I always got stuff to do. But that's part of my job. That's part of why I love it. Because I got good at doing it. I wish I could own a big shop. And just have it all hooked up to one filtration system. Maybe someday. So help me God. I just have to look at my shiny guitars too. I haven't played them most of the day. I'm ready. Got the PV cabinet coming tomorrow. That's going to be fun, guys. Some new guitar videos coming. Some Wu Tang. The Tiger King, the TV show, by the way, on Peacock. Hilarious. Jerry, say bye. Jerry. Yeah. He says freaking fish.